Today we're talking about a budget 5-inch monitor for your camera from a company called Fieldboard. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Photo Justice Photo Moment. This monitor here is an absolute budget five inch monitor. The five inch monitor size is kind of all the rage these days. It's really nice and compact, it's very lightweight, batteries last longer because it's a smaller screen, and it's a very convenient thing to put on top of your DSLR or DSLM. This is what we're looking at, the Feel World F5. It is a five inch full HD display, HDMI in and out, and it actually will bring full 4K through. It won't pass through 60 frame, but it will do full HD up to 30. It is a thousand to one contrast ratio, so pretty good contrast, and 450 candelas per square meter. It's the same thing as NIT, so 450 NIT. Not a massively, massively bright screen, but having taken this outdoors, especially with the sunshade on it, it's fine. Overall, it feels like it's a very usable brightness. Now, to put this into comparison, Atomos, of course, makes really great displays. This is their new display called the Shinobi. This is dramatically brighter. This is a thousand nit display. This does Atom HDR, this supports log and it supports LUTs and it has a ton of other features. It is more than twice the price, but at $400, that is a bargain. That is an incredible display for 400 bucks. So right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you that if money is not a massive object to you, then the Atomos is probably a better choice. It is a brighter display, but if budget is at all a concern or you're just looking for something that's cheap, the Feel World, as you're gonna find, is pretty awesome. First of all, it comes with a mounting arm that is kind of a cool way to do things. See how this bracket comes off of the hot shoe on your camera. It actually adds a cold shoe here. So if you want to attach a microphone right there, you can do that. It then mounts to this monitor on the side, which means it's very easy to flip this over. You can go into the menu system and flip the display in the menu. It doesn't know that it's been rotated, so it won't flip automatically. But if it's something you're doing all the time, you could program that into one of the two programmable function buttons. You'll see here the way this is attached. This is a quarter 20 going into this post here. But you also might want to post on the bottom if you just wanted to mount this on a tripod or light stand or something like that. This little guy here just unscrews. Two little screws there and it screws into there. You'll see across the top, you've got a series of eight buttons, including your power and then navigation, up, down navigation buttons, a menu button, left, right navigations, and then your two programmable function buttons on there. On the bottom, you have a USB port for doing software firmware updates, a headphone jack, and then a power port if you want to go with the AC power. It does not include an AC power adapter. And then on the side over here, you've got your HDMI in, which you're obviously seeing here, an HDMI out for a pass through if you want, and then a DC in there. HDMI pass through. So what this does as far as 4K goes is you can send a 4K signal to this and it will pass the 4K signal out. So if you wanted to have an external recorder separate from this, you could record that and still view your scene on here. This display is HD 1920 by 1080. It will downsample automatically. So you can send 4K out of here into this. It'll do the downsampling and then pass the clean 4K signal on to your recorder, whatever you've got. About the battery, this is an NP battery on here. It has a battery bracket that is supposed to be compatible with NP and E6 batteries. That's the Canon style. You can see the little plugs right there. This should snap in. Now, I don't know if at some point the E6 battery changed its slots in here. This is a really old one. It's just what I happen to have, but this will not go in. The slots on here do not line up with the tabs on here. So either these batteries changed or they say that it works with E6, but it really doesn't. It also comes with a lens shade. This has a little Velcro tab on it. There is another little Velcro strip that comes on a sticker and you have to put it on. And I always feel like it's not going to hold up for very long. But once it's in place, it's just a case of putting this on with Velcro. I just feel like one of these days I'm going to pull this Velcro lid off and it is just going to rip the sticky off of it. Let's get into the menu system and see what this thing can do. You have a picture profile mode that you can load onto the screen itself. There's a few built-in ones and then you can set a user one on there if you want to. If you wanted to change your color temp on that screen, you can do that as well. The next set is your languages. Aspect ratio, probably for the most part, you can just leave this in auto, but as you cycle through, you'll see it'll give you a 4, 3, 16 by 9. And then it has this just scan and panorama mode, which I have yet to really understand what they do. The manual literally says just scan or panorama. It doesn't tell you anything about what they are. There is a P2P mode. Now this is supposed to be pixel to pixel. And I think that this is not working right. So in my mind, at least, pixel to pixel means we are going to see one pixel on this display for one pixel that's being sent in, which would mean if I'm sending in a 4K signal, which I am doing right now, hitting P2P should 
push me in effectively 200%. So I'm looking at every single pixel on there. The idea should be that you're getting a pixel for pixel sensor readout onto the screen. That's how I interpret it. It's not happening. So I don't know if it just doesn't work right or if I'm completely misunderstanding what's supposed to be, but that is unfortunately not actually doing anything at this point. No signal, what you want to happen when there's no signal on, you can actually change the transparency on the position of this on-screen display. You can change the backlight brightness of the screen. Power on auto, when you plug in the AC power, it will automatically turn on. So that's useful if you have this in a more permanent setup and you have your power fed into the monitor off of the wall and you flip a switch and that feeds power to it, you want it to come on automatically. And then there's a USB upgrade and then a reset procedure. You do have a zoom in here, so you can zoom in 4X, 9X, 16X, or back to off. And that of course is gonna allow you to really do critical focus when you're doing manual focus and you want to really zoom into that screen, that will let you do that. I've got that programmed into one of the custom function buttons, which I think is a pretty good use of those buttons in there. Then there's zoom modes in here. It's kind of these presets of how much it zooms. That's the zoom all on there. And then there's this weird left, right, up, down. So you could literally zoom in and pan it around and kind of lock that into a position. There is the scan mode, under scan or over scan. You definitely want to leave this in under scan because if you go to over scan, you are not going to see everything that you're recording, at least coming off of a GH series camera. If you go to under scan, you do see everything on here. Same as you see on the LCD, you go to over scan and you no longer do. I want to show you the nine grid zoom, but first I have to go to this page and go down and activate nine grid. So let me just turn that on. You see, we've got our nine square on here and you see how there's a little red box around one of these. I can move this around to a different box and then whichever one I want to zoom into, I push one of the up down buttons and it zooms into that. You've got a center marker that you can turn on or off and you see that coming up the little red crosshair on there. You've got safety frames here so you can see what this would look like at 80%. So you're kind of an action safe area and you can make that 80, 85, 90, 93 or 96%. Image freeze is a really neat feature. If for whatever reason you want to hold the image on screen. Maybe you're just studying a frame. You want to really look at it closely, take some time to look at it and not have to worry about the set changing. I don't know. Image flip is where you would flip the whole image here for flipping it over and you'll see you have multiple options in there. There's a horizontal flip, a vertical flip and a horizontal plus vertical flip. So you really can do it however you want to. If you want to have it so it's a mirror image when it's facing you or have it not be a mirror image, you can choose that option. Now you saw the on-screen display flipping with it because I have enabled OSD flip. So if I have turned that off, then the image flips but the on-screen display the menu system does not you also have anamorphic mode so if you're shooting with anamorphic lenses you can do an anamorphic distortion in here check field is so that you can check individual channels if we rotate through you can see the whole image as monochrome you can then see just the red just the green or just the blue channel you can turn the histogram on or off another handy one to program into the one of the function buttons you have a false color display focus peaking under focus assist you can change your focus peaking colors you can go through red green blue or whatever you like zebra striping and then once that's on now you can change at what level you want that to go in one IRE increment embedded audio do you want to see your audio display we now see the meters on here from what the camera is feeding it the ratio marker gives us a display do we shooting for a 4 3 a 13 9 14 9 15 9 16 9 1.85 to 1 or 2 3 5 to 1 you can change the outline color you can even change the width of that you can make that a much bigger thicker display you can choose how dark you want the cropped out area to be and then the last page on here is the function buttons F1 and F2. You'll see all the options that you have on there. It could be anamorphic, zoom option, the nine grid embedded audio, overexposure, false colors, histogram, image freeze, um, image flip, aspect ratio, focus assist, check field, safe frames, and center marker. Any of those can be programmed into either of those buttons. And that is all there is to it. It's got a lot of features. It's feature rich. It really does have the things that you would want off of a monitor. It is bright. It's not massively bright, but it's definitely bright enough to see outdoors. If you're really in bright sun, you're gonna want the shade, but it comes with the shade and that works out well. At the price, it's really hard to beat. I had mentioned in the opening that it will do up to DCI, so that's 4096 wide. The manual says DCI to 24 hertz, 24p. It actually supported it 30p, which was great. If you are shooting, let's say you're shooting 4K 60 on here, so Ultra HD 60p on here. If you try to output 4K 60 to the display, the display says no signal, it can't do that. But remember that within the camera, you can have the camera output only 1080p. You would set the camera to record 4K 60, but output 1080p and it'll output, I think 1080p 30 at that point so that it works on the monitor there. Overall, pretty robust, pretty uh, pretty interesting display. Definitely a fair price and you know, I'm giving it a, I'm giving it a thumbs up for sure. All right, that's it folks. For those of you watching live, we're gonna jump into the Q&A. For those of you not watching live, we are gonna see the Q&A pop up right here in just a moment if you wanna see it. Mm -hmm.